Looks like, um, not being a medical expert, it looks like something like a, a medial strain to me, but um, he was walking walking at the end of the game, uh, as we saw it right at the end of the game, so it could be good news. He's pretty tough, Nitsi, he's pretty well put together, so let's hope he's OK. Well, Barmy, can I ask you about Kevin Sheedy? Uh, we heard before that uh, Kevin Sheedy actually spoke to the Hawthorne players in honour, I guess, of Paul Salmon, who almost seemed to suggest when we spoke to him earlier that uh, perhaps they got a little bit overawed. A strange mm. tactic, do you think a good one? Oh, I, I don't think you should worry about trying those new things, but I must admit, I, I don't know that I would do it. I think it's um, you almost got to keep your own room sacrosanct. But I mean, with Paul having played so long with Sheeds, and I, I think you know Swab is that sort of bloke that he's not, you know, he's, he's prepared to do things, and I, I don't think he reckons those things affect the way you play. Obviously, having lost, no one will ever do it again. But I think it was a terrific thing, though, a terrific thing for Paul because um, he really did spend so much time with Sheeds and pretty courageous thing to do. But uh, I don't think I'd do it just the same. Well, we can go to the highlights, and what a match it was, a strange match. It started in great style for Melbourne, they really shot out quickly, and Powell taking a great mark early. Yeah, so probably the one, if you had the, uh, the ticket at the lunch as to who kicks the first goal, you wouldn't have had Powell here, I don't reckon, but that's a, that's a good effort and a nice goal. It was interesting, um, it was just to see how this would go, if you saw both teams last week, they both you know, played pretty well, it was interesting to see who was going to be the real deal, and it turned out to be Melbourne. Yeah, well you can see that Melbourne kicked the first couple, and then Hawthorne went bang, 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 I think they kicked the next uh, four goals, and here's Nick Holland, who was uh, pretty dangerous early. Well, I think this is the time when they'd start to be concerned, because as we alluded to when we were talking to Paul Salmon before, that the problem with Melbourne perhaps was going to be how you're going to cope with the likes of Thompson, Crowe um, and Holland all together in the forward line. Well, here we see a handball, and Crawford was allowed to uh, be got at, I guess you could say, by yeah. McDonald. Picking on a bloke in his 300 game. Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit good, cool, isn't it? Paul's just misread it slightly and missed the shepherd. He, uh, it was a good effort by Junior McDonald there to get to the, the tackle on Crawford. He, he probably should have shepherded him. Well, we're watching the game with interest, and uh, at that stage, Hawthorne were on top. We want to have a look here at uh, you explaining the way Melbourne play the game, running the ball through the midfield, but the Hawks were trying to counter that by pushing Paul Salmon back. Yes, well, I saw this very much firsthand last week. They ran the ball beautifully, Melbourne, out of defence. They, as you see here, they chip it around, they try and get it on the way out, they move it through, and now back in through the corridor, which they do really well. And this uh, work has been working very well for them. And Stephen Phoebe is often one of the players that do it, kick it in long. But Paul had put himself in the back way. As he said, they played a, away from each other here in wide a fair bit. Uh, when Melbourne are going well, that kick will go to White probably 10 or 15 metres in front of him, and he often has a shot from about the 50. But uh, this is a terrific rebound from Hawthorne, the way they uh, actually turned that under pressure they were into, uh, into a goal, as it turned out. And here again, they would be concerned with Collins on Crowe, when Crowe gets the footy and they finish up with a goal. But those boys really stuck to their task well and made it very difficult for them. Well, they looked very dangerous at quarter time. Uh, Hawks leading by 13 points, and they extended that lead to 21 points. But as we start to have a look at some of the highlights in the second quarter, the turnaround by the Demons was, uh, was quite amazing. And Adam Uzo was sensational, wasn't he? Yeah, and very good last week too. So uh, it was, it was really quite interesting. Uh, Hawthorne looked like they had the control. I think it was something like 6-6 six, six to 3-3 three, three or thereabouts. There's another one of those gub gubbies. One of those. <laughs> so he's picked off. Uzo beautifully there, and, and Adam doesn't let him down and kicks a goal. I mean, that's part of today's footy. If you don't change the direction out of defence, if you don't take the risk to run it, well, you won't put pressure on it. But if you make a mistake, uh, I mean, no one's too happy. That's uh, Uzo again kicking the ball in. Um, good bit of work here. Farmer's always dangerous, isn't he? Here he goes. Look out. I think I might kick a goal, he says. Saw a bit of this last week, too. Yeah, you would, have, you would have got a little bit sick of seeing that last week. You kicked one goal in the first, two, uh, one goal in the second, and then he really turned it on in the third. <laughs> David that, Neese before he went off. Uh, exactly. Interesting look, isn't it? It's the Hannibal Lecter look, I think. <laughs> so he doesn't bite someone. But isn't that a beautiful kick? Well outside 50. Never looked like missing. Beautiful stuff. Well, this was when the Demons were, were coming back. And at this stage, the game was really in the balance. And, uh, but the lead changed several times. And on this occasion, it's the Hawks that move forward. And uh, Nick Holland takes the mark and kicks the goal. And it was pretty hard to read at this stage. It was. And, and again, as we said, there was a real uh, seesaw in the middle there. Both teams were really trying to get some, some control in the midfield to get the ball up forward more often than the other side. And um, whoever was going to do that was genuinely going to win the game. And... Uh, uh, you, you wouldn't have liked to have known who was going to do it at this stage, but really Melbourne did, didn't go backwards from this point. Killed yeah, half-time and Melbourne uh, just getting in front just before the break, but uh, you wouldn't have expected what happened in the third quarter. And again, it was the Wizard. Uh, it was the Jeff Farmer show, wasn't it? And they're those fellows. I mean, I mean Russell Robertson, who did some good work, and Adam again, and here he is. He can kick him anyway, can't he? He is a, he's a terrific player to watch, isn't he? Let's watch another one. There'll be a few more, I reckon. Here he goes again. You reckon he's got the... Me oh, that's, that's it again. Beautiful stuff. Walsh's been Walsh a good again. player for them, yes, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Again. He's been a very good player. Very hard worker. Works very hard. 
There he is again, just pushes him away. Don't worry about going back for the kick, we'll just kick it over our shoulder. You touched on Adam Uze and uh, we'll see some of his uh, great play here. He had uh, 22 possessions again today, or 29 possessions, in fact, 22 kicks and seven handballs. He's, a, he's another one who I reckon is a good barometer of how well Melbourne are going. When he's going well, they can really take on any team, I reckon. Well, I, th I think the, probably the interesting thing is that if the rest of the team is playing well enough, the midfielders are getting enough of it, it means that uh, Adam can perhaps not be tagged out of the game. I mean, he's not perhaps the key player to stop, but I think what happens is next week, guess who's going to be picked up pretty tightly. And I think that's the way it is, but that's what Melbourne need to happen so that then their other players can perhaps have more influence. But I mean, that, that's the strength of a good balanced side. Well, you would have thought the Hawks uh, would have been able to come back and really fight on in the last quarter, but it was pretty disappointing the way they finished. Uh, it was really just more Melbourne highlights. And Wheatley, uh, after some good play from, uh, from David Swartz uh, coming up, Wheatley uh, kicks the goal, and even though this is not that great stylish, uh, Wheatley and Whelan, those boys this year have been very good, haven't they? Well, Whelan particularly in defence, and Wheatley's been good. He's, he comes on Look at the uh, kick. fairly regularly. He was a good kid last year. He was only a young boy, played in the under-18s last year. He's, uh, he's got, obviously, he's got himself pretty fit, works pretty hard, and can play uh, both tall and, and short, if you know what I mean. He's a middle-sized player and can do both jobs, so he'll have a good future in footy, one would think. Good little bit of play by Nicholson then, just to do some work. Brad Green came on, came on towards the end, and one on three, gets the ball out, and uh, Robertson finishes with a goal. And that, that was in the end, that was, uh, things just weren't working for Hawthorne in the end. Travis Johnson's an interesting player, and uh, from a Melbourne point of view, I would have thought a player that if they can really get him just to step up a bit, then uh, he could be a very important player for them. I think uh, what you're talking about, I think uh, we underestimate the impact of actually playing league footy, what that has on kids. It's really a huge commitment from them. Expectations and, were yeah, great too, and weren't he, they? And he's, you know, he's, he's just got to mature, because he's got beautiful balance, he's got lovely skills, and just, you know, become part of the whole deal, he'll be a very, very good very, very good player, I think. Terrific day for the Demons, but not so for Peter Swab. But let's have a listen to what he had to say. Yeah, I, look, I was disappointed more. In, I thought we got thrashed in the middle of the midfield. I think Melman's midfield just, um, just, you know, worked harder, used the ball better, outran us, outworked us. Are they, they're pretty quick, aren't they? Oh, they're on a side, very good, very good midfield. They just keep working, a good work rate, and... Um, you know, they'll, um, they'll certainly, uh, I, I would think they'd make the finals, Melbourne. And uh, on their day, I'd say, you know, who's ever got them will get a real contest. You guys have got Collingwood next week, and uh, they've picked a more bad time for you <laughs> for them to break the, the, oh. the duck. Yeah, but I mean, look, you know, we, our form today wasn't good, so you'd have to say that, uh, you know, on this week's performances, that we'll go in as the underdogs against Collingwood, so that's a challenge for us. Same old story, you know. It's only it's another week. We've got to, we've got to try and um, you know bounce back from this from this loss. Do you, do you deserve to be a finalist? Do you think? And would you be a worthy finals? Do we deserve it? I don't know. You know, that's a good question. Not on today's performance. We don't look like we do. But you know, footy footy changes pretty quick. If we come out next week and have a good win and hit some form, then all of a sudden, you know, who knows? But you know, if you if you measure it on what happened today, you'd say no, no, but. But I'm, you know, footy changes week to week. Next week we belt, if we come out and belt Collingwood, things, things might turn around. So, got to keep positive about it. But today wasn't a good effort. No. Very disappointing day for the Hawks. And we'll hear more from, uh, about them from Neil Baum shortly. But uh, time to go to the victorious Demon Rooms at the MCG. And Kevin Bartlett is with Stephen Phoebe. Steve, it was a very good performance today by the back line. Yourself played particularly well. And, of course, you've got Walsh back there, who's a terrific player, and young Whelan. Yeah, no, look, it was a fantastic effort uh, because they, they've got, a, obviously, a tall forward line. And uh, the first half there, we, we tried to get a bit of assistance from the midfield by dropping a player off. And it really wasn't working that well because there wasn't a lot of scoring. But uh, to the guys' credit, they, they took the challenge up there. So it was just six on six there in the second half. And, uh, as you say, Whelan and Walsh and Ingerson and Gurdjieff, when he came on, they're all fantastic. Mm. I've never seen a Melbourne side tackle as well as they tackled today? Oh, look, it was very encouraging because uh, it's a focus that we've, uh, in the last few weeks that uh, our tackles have been down and uh, today, oh, look, I don't know what the stats were, but they were fantastic. The, the, the run from behind and I think even the last five minutes of the game, the still guys were chasing down. Mm. The midfield today actually took it away from Hawthorne, I think, before the start of the game. Most of us thought this was going to be the important area, but uh, Guy Rigoni and Leon Shelley, all those guys played well in the midfield and Adam Uze was fantastic. Yeah, no, Riggers did a fantastic job on, on Crawford. Um, Uze, was, look, he's been in great form over the last few weeks. We weren't winning the ball uh, initially in the first half, but in the second half there, the guys were clearing the ball 
magnificent win. What about when you're sitting back on the halfback flank and you see the whiz just <laughs> weaving a spell on the forward line? What no, goes through your mind? No, this is two weeks in a row now that I've, uh, I reckon if you put a camera on me, you might see a big grin on my face. But uh, no, it's exciting and uh, it's uh, sort of something that the Melbourne people love seeing and uh, it certainly keeps me rejuvenated to keep playing. Well, you're playing great football. Congratulations today. Thanks very much, KB. Kevin Bartlett with Stephen Phoebe at the MCG. The Demons winning by 69 points. A similar margin for Brisbane over Geelong. And at Optus Oval, the Blues getting home by 24 points after they kicked eight goals to nil in the first quarter. And that's where we go. Back to Optus Oval and David Parkin, the coach of the Blues. Well, I think we've... 69 points. Melbourne by 69 over Hawthorne and Carlton by 24. Let's go back to the MCG and hear from Neil Danaher. Um, I'm, I'm really proud of the way the, the leadership group with Dave Neat Sports, Lynn Chelly, Wei Woden have been able to uh, lead the group through, uh, I don't know, an unstable uh, couple of weeks. Uh, they're only a young group and, and uh, only learning about leadership, but uh, it was a real test for our club and uh, um, we just come out of the trough, I reckon there's no doubt we come out of a trough uh, with the form we've showed the last couple of weeks. and now. Uh, we, we, we look forward to taking on teams that are, are, are above us. You, you mentioned a couple of weeks ago during that trough you referred it back to 98 and how you got dealt with a couple of weeks in a row then. You seem to be able to pull out of it reasonably quickly. Yeah, well, um, and, and that's a, it's a credit to the, the character of the group. You know, we, we've tried to remain positive and, and uh, look up. Carlton were terrific. We caught them on a very, uh, they were very slick and a very good team. And uh, okay, I think every now and then you do have a bad day, and um, and we've showed that that's not the norm. I think uh, up and up up until the second half against the doggies, our form had been pretty consistent, even though we were quite young. Um, our form throughout the NC Cup and throughout the whole, uh, you know, what was it, 12 rounds, we, we'd been, been a, 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 a quite a, a tenacious, consistent side. We, we sort of had one and a half bad weeks and now we've been able to regroup and uh, that's credit to the whole club. So a good win for Melbourne and uh, repeating the news that the injury to David Neat seems to be okay. A jar.